guys and welcome back to my channel. I have a very quick video for you today. I'm going to show you how to take the crafty boho wall hanger or maybe you made American flag version or the watermelon version which is exactly like this one just made with watermelon colors. I'm going to show you how to take this pattern so the body is going to be the same and turn it into a pumpkin version for fall. This is inspired by my friend Katie over on Instagram. I will put her information for you guys down below. I'm releasing the modification here for all of you so you can create your own pumpkin wall hangers as well. So you're gonna start by following the pattern that's already on my blog to create the body of your pumpkin. I just used, I love this yarn in the color Burnt Pumpkin. That seemed appropriate. And once you get done with the body of your pumpkin, it's time to attach it to our ring. And I wanted to do this with you guys here on camera just in case you have been doing the other versions of this pattern and we're struggling with the ring. So that's why we're starting right here. Then I will show you how to add the stem and then I will show you how to make and add the vines. Okay, so the way that we are going to attach the sky to our ring is just by crocheting around the ring while we do a row of single crochets. So I'm gonna take my ring and I'm gonna go under my working yarn. So I'm sticking my piece into the ring under my working yarn over here. And then we're just going to kind of hold the ring and our work. So normally we would just put our single crochet right here and call it a day. Well, instead of that, we're gonna insert our hook into the stitch to make our first single crochet. And then we're gonna make sure that we're also going around the ring. Yarn over, pull up a loop. Yarn over, pull through two to complete our single crochet. We're gonna do this all the way around by placing two single crochets together in each stitch. So you're basically doing an entire row of single crochet increases all the way around, making sure to go around the ring as you're going. So I'm gonna do a few with you guys here on camera. And then I'm gonna show you what we do. Cause you can tell, you can see that the ring is bigger than the piece and that is what we want because crochet is stretchy and we're going to be able to pull and stretch and manipulate this thing so it will stay nice and taut um, as a finished product again two single crochets in each stitch this will give us plenty of slack and help to fully hide the ring between our stitches so you won't if we just did one single crochet it would be really gappy and it probably wouldn't stretch as nice to be nice and taut if you've been following along any of my crochet patterns before you know that i usually yarn under when i make my single crochets instead of over I am yarning over specifically for this pattern because I want my stitches to be nice and straight and have a nice clear V shape because if I made them a little bit twisted like I normally do, the metal would pop through more visibly and this just gives it a nice cleaner look. And if you have no idea what I'm talking about, then don't even worry about it. That little tidbit was just for the folks who were curious as to why I was yarning over instead of my, my regular yarn under situation. I'm going to continue doing a, a bunch of these off camera and then I'll come back when things start to get a little tight and show you how to stretch and manipulate the piece to work for you. Okay, here's what I've got so far. I think it's a little less than halfway. I think halfway, a little less than halfway, but I wanted to show you how it's looking like a little bunchy. The stitches are looking bunchy. They're getting wavy. I wanted to show you that. And they're like not staying in place. They're leaning forward or leaning back. That is to be expected and that is okay because we are going to make the stitches do what we tell them to do. 
So it's very easy to just flatten them out. And then we're gonna kind of take and kind of push them around the ring like this. And I was using my body to push against the ring over here. And you can see that they are looking much nicer, much more uniform. And then I'm gonna continue with my stitches over here. I'm gonna stay zoomed out so you can see the overall view of what's happening and how I like move the piece as I work. Oh wow, this is gonna be difficult on camera. I'm gonna try. Nope, it's not gonna work. So I'm going to resituate and I'll be right back. <laughs> okay, zoomed out a little bit further. So maybe this will give me a better grip on my piece so I'm not bumping into my tripod. Okay, Let's see if I can get under here better. It's still very awkward because I'm filming and holding myself weird, but I wanna be able to show you guys like I just keep pulling this guy along as I go. It looks very weird the way I'm doing it right now. So as I continue to go, I'm just gonna keep yanking this thing and pulling it where I need it to be. And then if it gets to where it's not wanting to come, I'll just go like this again and kind of stretch it all the way around from both sides. And I will keep doing that pulling and then readjusting and then pulling and then readjusting and adding the stitches until I'm all the way back down here um, to the other side. But you can see it will stretch. It will stretch. And when it's all evenly stretched from every point all the way around, it will be nice and pretty and taut. Okay, so this is a horrible, not flattering at all angle. I can see what you see here on my sweet Apple watch. Um, but I'm going to try to show you what it looks like when I'm comfortably crocheting and not trying to crochet around my tripod so you can get a better look at how I'm holding my hands. Please excuse my mess and my sweet Crocs. Normally, I prepare to be on camera and today was not that day, but I'm just kind of pulling the body along with me with my thumb and ring finger. I'm just kind of stretching it right along. Trying to double check on my watch that you can still see what I'm seeing or what I think you're seeing. So we're just gonna continue to do this all the way around. And then now it's getting a little, it's getting a little wonky. So I'm just going to kind of coerce it into going the direction that I want it to go into. There we go. Looking good. And then back to crocheting it right on along the ring here. I hope this angle is helpful for somebody. And then once you get to where you're almost done, you might have to keep adjusting. You might have to do like adjusting more often, but that's totally fine. So I'm getting ready to do it again here. Keep it going, looking good. Okay, almost done. Just a few more. It's gonna stretch nicely. Here we go. Now it's getting really easier again because everything's already lined up where we want it to be and most of it is already being stretched. As soon as we get to the end, I will go back to our other more professional setup and show you how I'm gonna tie off, but it's really simple. You probably already know what to do. You probably just do it without even thinking about it. Almost done, just a tiny spot left. And I will be right back. I'm gonna switch this back to the other view now. Okay, just finished the last single crochet. Now I'm going to kind of adjust everything all the way around. 
and you can see that everything is nice and uniform, very taut in the middle here. It's not sagging in either direction. And to tie off, I'm just going to insert my hook into the top of our first single crochet. Can't tell if that's it or my chain. We're gonna go in this one. It really doesn't matter. And then pull through, nice and tight. And then that is done and we can sew in our tail um, on the back of our work with a tapestry needle. Okay, next I'm going to show you how to crochet this stem and then how to add it to your pumpkin wall hanger. This is what it looks like after it's done, but since brown does not show up well, we are gonna use a different color just so you can see what I'm doing because this is made kind of funky. I literally just made it up Right now, my original thought was just to single crochet, like join my yarn and then single crochet back and forth, but that was kind of floppy. This gives us a much more structured stem and it looks really nice when it's hanging on a wall because I hung it on a nail just to check it out and it looks really good. It's not floppy, it stays flush against the wall. So this is the method that we're going with. Um, it's a little funky and it's a little new. I'm using something I'm calling the slip stitch sandwich. So bear with me and I will show you how to make this. I'm gonna use I Love This Yarn in the color linen just so you guys can see. We are going to start by making a slip knot, inserting it onto our hook and then chaining 10. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 10. Then we are going to skip the chain closest to our hook so we're skipping this guy right here, and we're gonna single crochet back down our chain, starting in the second chain from the hook, but in the back bump. So normally you would put your hook right here, and that's where you would place your single crochet. We're not gonna go there. We're gonna lean our work a little bit forward so we can see these bumps on the back. That is the back bump, and we're going to insert our hook under there instead, and that's where we're gonna place our single crochet. One, we're going to do that all the way down. Two, for a total of nine single crochets. Three. Four. Five. Six. Seven. Eight. Nine. Okay, and this first part is where it's going to get a little funky. We're going to single crochet back down the other side of our chain. So we're making like a rectangular shaped tube, but it's closed on one end already. So I'm just going to, if you look at your stitches, these down here, the bottom, that's where we're going to insert our hook. And we're going to, so we're going to have nine single crochets down this side of the, of the chain and then nine single crochets back down the other side. And then we're going to join in the top of our first single crochet. So I'm just going to kind of turn my work. So I'm now looking at the bottom of my stitches. I'm going to insert my hook right here into the bottom of the stitch closest to my hook and place my single crochet there. Got to get this tail out of my way. That's one. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and nine. So that is going to be our first round or row, whatever you want to call it. We're not working in the round though. We're going to be joining and chaining each time. So we're just going to call them rows. That's our first row. It has 18 stitches because we did nine and then nine. So each stem row is gonna have 18 stitches. Now we're going to join into the top of our first single crochet that we created. Join and then chain one. We are not going to turn our work. We're gonna continue going in the same direction. Now for round two, we're gonna single crochet one time in each stitch all the way around. Again for 18, one, 
two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. It gets a little weird over here. Nine. But it will only be weird for the first row or two. This is ten. And we got eleven. 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, and 18. And then it looks like we missed a stitch, but we haven't. It's just because it was our first join. We're going to join into the top of our first single crochet. There we go. And then chain up. Now, we're going to do rows three through seven just the same way. Eight, nine, ten, eleven. Seventeen and eighteen. Join into the top of our first single crochet and chain one. Now we can start to flip it to where it's the right side facing out. So I just poked the corners out with my fingers and we're going to continue to single crochet one time each stitch all the way around until we have a total of seven rows. I will let you know if that number is wrong, but I'm pretty sure I did seven. If you want your stem to be longer or short, shorter, you just could do more rows. If you want it to be wider, you would just chain more at the beginning. 18, okay, join to the top of our first single crochet and chain one. And you can see our stem starting to take shape. If yours gets wonky uh, due to like tension and stuff, you're welcome to steam it and block it if you want it to be more. But once you put it on the pumpkin, it's it's pretty straight. Like it's not wonky at all. Once we do our little slip stitch sandwich. So I'm just going to continue these and continue doing these rows until I have 17 rows. Um, also with single crocheting, in the round, like without turning your work every time, your um, seam can get wonky. So it's gonna look like it's, I mean, it's gonna be going up this way and it will eventually cross into the, the side of my piece. Something you can do to kind of re redirect uh, the wonky. If you've been paying attention, I've been putting my first single crochet into the same stitch where I just joined. The last one but for this row I'm gonna start in my first single crochet over here and then my my last one will be in this same spot where I just joined and that's gonna kind of push it over um, this is just optional if you don't like your seam to be veering you can kind of do this to make it re redirect 10 11 12 13 14 15, 16, 17. Okay, see? We're getting close. I'm going to shove my 18th right in there. It's not going to want to go. Oh, that was a slip stitch. 18. And then join into the top of our first one, which is this one right here. And then you can see it, it was going this way and now it's goes whoop and it's going to start. So then I'm going to go back to where I was again. Single crocheting starting in the first stitch, not skipping like I did just then, but back to where we've been doing the whole time. Eighteen. Okay, joining to the top of our first single crochet and chain one. Let's take a look at it. I'm going to go ahead and trim this a little bit 
and then shove it down in there. We do not need to sew it in because it's not structural and it's not going to pop out. So in, in he goes. It's looking good. That's my seam over here. So now it's going to start going again at this angle. But it should be good. And we have one, two, three, four, five, six rows so far. So, yep. So let's do row number seven. Okay, just finished my 18th single crochet. Gonna join to the top of my first single crochet. Okay, let's compare it to my first one here. Looks like I did it one more row. So we're gonna do eight total rows instead of seven. I apologize, it will be uh, correct over on the blog post. So I'm gonna do one more row and then I'm gonna show you how to attach this guy to our pumpkin body using the slip stitch sandwich. I'm sure there is a proper name for this method. I have not seen it before, but it has most likely already been used. I mean, chances of you, the one watching this right now, have probably already used this method. I have not. I'm calling it the slip stitch sandwich. Okay, so I'm gonna join and then chain one and pull up a loop. Now I have my stem complete and I'm going to grab my pumpkin. I went ahead and joined this one right next to where my tail is for the body and the reason I did that was because my vines are going to go over here and I want it to kind of distract from the seam that was created when when crocheting the body. So I'm going to I'm going to pretend add this to another part of the pumpkin, but I wanted to show you my my official stem is added to this part of the pumpkin and it was very strategic. You can put it anywhere that you want. Um, you don't have to do it near your seam if you don't want to, but I'm thinking my curly vines will distract from that, that line right there. It's very subtle anyway. I mean, most people won't even recognize it. Um, that's just how my brain works. So we're just gonna turn this guy around so you can't even see him. It's like a whole brand new pumpkin. And this is where I'm gonna show you the slip, stips, slip stitch sandwich, okay. So bear with me, don't get frustrated. We're gonna make this work, okay. So we are gonna be, we have 18 stitches, nine and nine, nine in the front, nine in the back. We're gonna pair them up into buddies, okay. These two right here are buddies, these two. And then these two are buddies. This is three, this is four, this is five, six, seven, eight, Then we've got these two, and I'm just doing this to show you where they're at and to tell my brain where they're at. My stitch marker's being really floppy. So these are the stitches that are our buddies, and these are going to be where we place our first slip stitch sandwich. So we need to get a good, a good view. We got this stitch right here. That's going to be our front stitch, and then this stitch back here is going to be our back stitch. I'm going to go ahead and leave my stitch marker in the back one. And I'm gonna go ahead and insert my hook in the front one. So back into my working yarn here, right? And then I'm gonna insert my hook into here, just like this, okay? So that's how I'm doing it right now. Inserting my hook into the first stitch and then you can tighten up your yarn here. And then I'm gonna insert my hook into the first stitch on my pumpkin. Here we go first stitch on my pumpkin, and then I'm gonna insert my hook into this buddy stitch back here where my stitch marker is. That's where the third insert is gonna go. You can move the stitch marker now. And that is where we're going to place our first slip stitch sandwich stitch. <laughs> so we're gonna pull through all the things Trying to do it on camera. Pull through all of the things. There we go, perfect. And then through that guy. That is our first slip stitch sandwich. It is through the front, the middle, and the back, and then pull it all through together. Now we're gonna go into the second stitch here on our stem, into the second stitch here on our body. Okay, so we're through the stem and the body. I hope you can see that. 
and then the second stitch on the back side of our stem right there okay then we're going to grab our yarn and pull through like grab it pull it through all the stitches sometimes you got to give it a little wiggle wiggle to pull it through and then go through the one that's on your hook too that is our second slip stitch sandwich stitch okay number three we're gonna go into the third one into the third pumpkin spot okay and then into the third on the back here okay then we're gonna grab our yarn and pull through all with some wiggles there we go easy peasy right just it's just different but it, it gets the job done so now I'm going into the fourth stitch keep bumping into my tripod pull it through wiggle wiggle okay it's not coming through because I'm getting caught okay there we go that's four here's five into the pumpkin then out through the back sorry okay grab our yarn that's five here comes six it really helps to flip your pumpkin over so you can see like when i flip it over i can see the stitch perfectly and then grab the yarn pull through all with some wiggles here okay there we go a few more to go we should have nine total i think this is seven okay grab the yarn pull through eight eight and then eight there we go grab our yarn pull through come on oh gosh it's getting caught on something there we go all the way through and then the last one we're gonna go through the front piece through the pumpkin body through the back piece just like that sorry i'm trying not to bump into my tripod grab it pull it through this last one might be a little finicky so just go really slow and get through all three stitches one at a time until you're through okay i think somehow i pulled a piece of the stitch let me just do this okay there we go make sure it's nice and good looky there now to tie off it's really simple you can go ahead and cut your yarn leaving enough space for sewing in your tail and i'm just gonna do this to tie off pull it nice and taut and then you can sew your tail in like in the back and look at that nice little seam there and it looks really hard to see with the brown because brown i don't know it's just darker so you really can't see hardly anything with the brown so lots of room lots of grace on this project if you make any mistakes but it is on there it is attached oops sorry it is on there it is attached with slip stitches all the way through nice and tight nice and sturdy and you can kind of like if you feel like your stem is going like this that's because these stitches are clumped together so you can just kind of pull them apart because when we squished them all together to go around the pumpkin so if, it's okay to just kind of maneuver the other stitches so these ones have room to separate so you don't have a stem that's kind of shaped like this okay now that we have our well this one has two stems <laughs> look how silly now that we have our stems I'm going to take this one back off and continue working with this one, um, but I wanted to make our vines and then we will attach them. Okay, for my first vine, I'm using Jelly Bean Green. I love this yarn from Hobby Lobby. You can also use a pretty sage or a dark olive if you want to go with a different, like a more boho or new, like darker, richer 
colors for your pumpkin if that matches your fall decor better or your ideal customer's fall decor. We're going to go ahead and start by making a slip knot, grabbing our hook. Now this is super simple. You can chain for as long as you want or as short as you want and make all of your vines. You never have to make the same vine twice. They can be as all different sizes. It really doesn't matter. So we're just gonna chain two, three, four, five, six. I'll give you these numbers just for comparison, but you can literally do anything. Seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. 21, 22, 23, 24, 25. Okay, we're gonna start with 25. And let's just go ahead and look at it on our pumpkin so you can get an idea. This is kind of what we're looking at. It's gonna look a little bit longer though because of the stitches. So this is what we're looking at for 25. Hope you can see all that. And then I would make some that was a little smaller, some that's a little longer, and get a nice variety of vines for your pumpkin. Now that we have our 25, we are going to start in the second chain from hook right here. And I'm going to do half double crochet stitches. If you wanted it to be skinnier, you could do single crochet. If you wanted it to be fatter, you could do double crochet. I'm just going to split the difference and do half double crochets. So I'm going to yarn over, insert my hook into the second chain from my, from my hook. Grab my yarn, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through all three. That is the half double crochet. I'm going to place three half double crochets in the same spot. Two and three. Then I'm going to continue to do that all the way down. I'm going to continue. Well, looky there. I'm going to continue to put three half double crochets in each chain all the way down. So that should be 75 or a little less because we skipped a chain. So between 70 and 75, half double crochet stitches. But I'm just going to keep doing three in each stitch. One, two, three. Next. One, two, three, keep it going. And you can already see it starting to curl. That's what we want. Three, one, two, three. And that's gonna give us a very cute, curly cue vine for our pumpkin here. Let's do a couple more and then we'll take a look at it. Three, next, one, two, three, one, two, three. See, it's a very soothing project because it doesn't take much thinking, much counting, much brain work. You just put three single crochets in each stitch. You chain as long as you want, then put three single crochets in each stitch. Very easy. And then you can see that it is curling looking really nice. We'll continue to go all the way down and then I will show you how to attach this to your pumpkin wall hanger. Very easy. And the beauty is in the variety of vines in my opinion. It is art. You can make it however you want. I have seen people put like linen colored flowers, crocheted flowers onto their pumpkin. So it's kind of mixing the crafty boho wall hanger and the pumpkin together and adding some flowers to their pumpkin. I have seen somebody on Instagram, I'll try to post it on the screen for you and tag the creator. Um, she put a big burlap bow, that's kind of hard to say, big burlap bow on the stem of her pumpkin. It was adorable. I love mixing uh, different medias with crochet. I think it's really pretty. Um, so you could get you could get um, a little wooden sign that says fall or your family's initial and hang it on your front door and attach it however you need to attach it. But I think um, the options are unless you could get a plaid bowl, plaid ribbon bow to put on it. You could do 
little wood slices with your family's names on it. The options, I mean, the creativity is limitless. Almost done here with my first little vine. Kind of crunched up quite a bit, didn't it? We can stretch it out. One, two, three, last one. Let's do single, I mean, half double crochet, half double crochet. Let's just, let's just go ahead and do three half double crochets, okay? Now we are going to cut our yarn, leaving a pretty long tail to help us attach it to our pumpkin. We probably should have left a bit of a longer tail at the beginning. I didn't think about that, but we can make this work. Now I'm just going to kind of stretch my little vine, very cute. And let's grab our pumpkin here. I wanna show you first what we got. Sorry, I have to get my yarn out of the way. So here's what it looks like now, size-wise. Again, that was 25, but I think it would be so pretty to have some like really long ones too, mixed in with this 25 here. Super cute, could add a couple different uh, shades of green. It would be gorgeous. I'm going to imagine these are already sewn in. That should have already been done by now, but we can do that later. We are going to take our crochet hook and come up from the, the back here. And let's see, we're gonna take the little one first, the first tail first, pull that in. And then I'm gonna go into a different spot so they're not in the same hole. You see the first green one went right there. The second one is going next to it, grab it, pull it in, okay, pull it all the way through. Now, make sure you're not losing your curly. You don't want it to get a weird wonky shape at the top. But look, look how nice that looks. I'm gonna flip our pumpkin over and you can tie these together. One, two, and then you could just like really knot them and make sure they're very secure or you can hide them up in your stem like between the the two panels and hide just hide them up in there um, or you can sew them in back here just make sure it doesn't go all the way through your pumpkin but i will do that after i add more vines but that is the basic idea of a crochet pumpkin wall hanger just pretend all of those tails are sewn in already and pretend there's multiple vines Thank you guys so much for hanging out with me during this video. Thank you, Katie, for your wonderful inspiration and allowing me to use your pictures and all those things to show people how creative you are. I hope you guys loved this modification. I think they would be perfect for door hangers during the fall, like finding a way to attach it to your front door. You could sew on a big piece of, like a big hoop of ribbon and use it to go on like the door hooks. Um, whatever you guys need to do. If you need some help, feel free to send me an email and we can try to work it out together on ways to hang this up. If you want to hang it up on a wall, I do have some drywall um, findings that I think are very helpful. They have a little hook on them. I will link that in the description below. Perfect for hanging these up on drywall. You can also use a small nail if you'd like, or I've even seen people crochet like a chain and then use it as a hook to hang this up however you would like to hang it up if you make one of these pumpkin boho wall hangers please tag me i would love to see them i would love to see the colors you use i would love to see where you place yours in your home i would love to see how you hung it up i would love to see like what if somebody used like a variegated oranges for the body or uh, got really creative with their vines. I really, really, really want to see them. So tag me at a crafty concept across all social media platforms and I will do my best to leave you a comment. But worst case, you will get a like. I try to at least like everything that I'm tagged in. I really do try hard, I promise. I also share um, Instagram posts that I'm tagged in over in the Facebook group. So the chances of you being shared over um, my Facebook page, not group, are going to be higher too if you tag me on Instagram.
If you have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comments below. I would be happy to answer them for you. If you like this tutorial and you want to see more modifications of patterns that are already on my blog, also tell me that in the comments because modifications are my jam and they are my favorite thing to do and I could do that all day. Okay, friends, that's all I have for today. I will see you over on the Instagram, over on the Facebook, over in all of the places. Be sure to give this video a thumbs up and subscribe if you haven't already, and I will see you in the next video.